What's up family, it's Wilson. Today we're gonna be making a technical for this clothing brand that we did last week. If you guys are not subscribed to the studio or Patreon, I highly suggest it as we did a full breakdown, how I came up with this process, how I came up with this design, how I made the design, and also how I made these mock-ups. Um, the brand right now is false narratives. You can see here that we made a mistake when we were deciding. I'm going to show you guys how I make my technicals and I'm also going to be sharing with you guys my size charts for these sort of graphics and garments and also how I wager without even using a tape measure how big to make the graphics. After a while, you tend to understand some of this stuff, but if I get wary on things, I'll just bring out a garment for reference and I'll measure it. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to have to do is highlight our design and copy it, pressing Command C on your Mac or whatever you guys use. Press File, New on Illustrator, and then we're going to open a new document. Now, the document in itself, we're going to head over to Print, and then we're going to select A3. The reason why I make all my technicals in A3 is in case they need to print out the file, uh, rather than have more resolution than a A4 piece of paper. Let's go ahead and name the project FN Technical. Uh, 2023 sweatsuit. Now from here, the first thing you guys are going to want to do is just label your documents and make sure you label it properly because um, it's just good in case the manufacturer has multiple documents in front of them. They don't make any mistakes. Um, name your brand, name what season it is. Da -da -da -da. There we go. And then from here, I just drop down season, winter slash four. And then you have to put what gender it is in case they have um, standard sizing. This all comes into play. So we'll go gender and then we'll go like this and then we'll go male slash. It's, it's based on a male silhouette. That's why we do this because they have um, different silhouettes for um, different, I guess, body types. Got in 100%, 400 GSM. So this generally clears up any confusion regarding the actual garment construction. So you got season, winter slash four, gender, male slash sex, unisex, cotton, 100% cotton. This shouldn't say cotton, actually. <laughs> this is their material. Cut in 100%. If you did want to do like a custom uh, material breakdown, you could be like cut in 95% and then nylon 5%. I don't know if you want to make this like some sort of Gore-Tex. You get the gist of it. This is literally just clarifies all you have to do in terms of production with the actual technical. So after you have that complete, we're going to go ahead and head over into the design document where you can see the thinking process regarding this design. And we're going to go ahead and select the different colors that we already have. And we're going to drop them in to the Illustrator document. Now from here, I'm going to select the black one and we're going to add narratives to the front because we agreed that um, having the full name would be the best option. So we went ahead and got false narratives. Now, I did forget to make the back design, but the back design is just blank. So we're going to go ahead and indicate that once we confirm the rest of this design. And then from here, you're going to start by separating your pants and also your hoodie because it just makes it a bit more less cluttered on your actual technical when you're making it. You can't make one page technicals. I've done that in the past. This doesn't really matter. So once you have that done, you're going to want to drag in your measurements. Now I have these measurements from the famous, I guess, hoodie that everyone wants to manufacture for. It was one of the first videos that I did getting samples. It was the blue hoodie. Um, and it's a perfect fitting hoodie. Like it's all around a good size, good cuffs. Everything is just perfect. And unless the client wants me to edit the actual um, crop of it, I'll go ahead and add in the crop. The only downside is it's in measure, it's in centimeters in terms of measurements, and I like to do my measurements in inches. It just gives me an all around a number, but centimeters are more accurate, so that's why they use centimeters when it comes to China's, when it comes to overseas manufacturers. Also, the US just tends to use inches, and I work mostly in the US, so inches is what I use. 
So after that, we're going to go ahead and just go into the false narrative design file and we're going to get the back of the hoodie because we don't have any backs regarding the design and we just need to indicate clearly and we just need to indicate clearly that the back is also blank. And for this, we can go ahead and just select the back design and select it, um, select the color. And that's about it because we don't really need it. I guess add any sort of effects or visual effects to the design let's go ahead and add these um washed i guess looking effects just to indicate that we're still keeping this same sort of wash on the back in case that in case that that confuses them so we're just going to go ahead and create a clipping mask real quick um with these designs let's go ahead and group these two and group the top one and then make that into a clipping mask so right now we got our back and front design and we can go ahead and label those two. Let's go ahead and label the back. And let's go ahead and label the front. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and indicate what sort of print styles we want on each design. And I like to do this two separate ways. It was either I do a call out or I do a call out and I also show the actual graphic. For instance, let's go ahead and select a neutral gray regarding this design like this. And let's go ahead and go into the file of the design and grab this design here. And then from here, we can sort of gauge how big we want this design using these boxes. And also we're going to indicate what sort of print style we want. So we want a fabric die cut sort of print because that's what the client was referencing regarding the design. And then from here, we can go ahead and size up our design. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and grab, I'm going to go ahead and grab some measuring tape. Now, if you're an OG of this channel, you know where this hoodie is from. It's from the first samples that we got. And we can go ahead and just roughly, not roughly, we can go ahead and get the width of the actual design. Now, 13 is perfect. And we can go ahead and add the conversion of 13 inches into centimeters. <clears throat> And then for this, we're going to go ahead and add a indicator saying scale to width. Now, if you know anything about design is understanding efficiency, we could, we could go ahead and measure every single angle start to finish, but that's just going to create headaches, especially if you don't know the measurements to the T, um, you might end up with a warp design. So just telling the manufacturer to scale it, um, as they would normally to the width, then that's perfect. Or you could go scale it to the height. But width makes the most sense because usually in design, when it comes to garments, you're going long wise. Next, I'm just going to add in this line to indicate that it's scaled so they don't have any mistakes. Um, and yeah, that's about it. We can go ahead and make this box red also on the outline. Just looks a little bit professional. Doesn't really add much to it. But yeah, that basically um indicates what we do in terms of sizing regarding the design and you guys can go ahead and copy these uh, measurements don't really care because um they're for this design and they're just generic measurements you'll usually find these measurements in most designs like this anyway um uh, fabric die cut we got that indicated the next thing we're going to want to indicate is just the color breakdown of the actual fabric so they can get a better representation of what sort of fabric we're going with now this is why having pantones is important because then we can just go um pantone p p and then grab the numbers of the actual pantone so this one is 179 it take 10 And then we put U because that's where the uncoded comes into part. And then we'll just line that with some red. And then we can grab the stitching reference here. I know the stitching reference is Pantone one take one because I use it all the time. And if it's not 1.1, I'm going to change it to 1.1. There it is. So now 
we have this. This sort of indicates and dictates how the rest of the technical looks. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and drag that down. And then we can add some indicators regarding the design. There we go. And then from here, we just have to do the same thing regarding narratives. So we're going to go ahead and grab narratives here. Okay, what type of um, print this is. So we're going to just go screen print. Like this. And then we can go ahead and drag that out. And sample this color here. Beautiful. Now that we have our technicals for this um, side complete, we're going to go ahead and do the rest of them until we have them all complete. So this back design here, we're going to go ahead and copy that over. Now for the yarn regarding this, they're going to want to know the actual Pantone of this. So we can go ahead and select the Pantone 179, it takes 16. And then you, and then from here, we can go ahead and select the material breakdown regarding the actual design. So we're going to go ahead and select this color here. So for this one, we're going for a one seven nine take 15. And then we're going to go for an actual um, wash. I wouldn't say wash. I'm pretty sure this is called sun fade. Fabric color. Boom, boom, boom. Now we have everything here. The last thing to do is indicate the zippers. One inch in width. And then for this, you're going to want the metal breakdown. Stainless steel. And then bam. From here, we can go ahead and do the same exact thing regarding the pants, same exact measurements, not same exact measurements, sorry, but um, generally it's the same thing. So just drag that duplicate over like this, and then you just want to replace everything. Now, regarding, let's go ahead and grab this. Now, regarding the actual pants, all you need is the actual inside and outside leg and also the waist. That's all you need for every single set of pants. Unless you have custom pockets, then you need to do a measurements of the pocket and put that in like we've done with the actual graphic measurements. But generally, all you need is inside, outside and waist. Um, sometimes you don't even need the inside leg. You just need the outside so they can get how long the actual pants is, or sometimes it will show length. So that's the length of the actual legs, but yeah. So we can go ahead and do the same exact thing. Fabric color is the same. And we can go ahead and just remove all this. Now I know roughly how big all these measurements are, I'm wearing pants, so I can just gauge it. We're going to copy these right here and also these right here. And we're going to drop them right here. Now, does this dash line actually do anything? No, but does it hurt to put it in? No. So why not put it in? That's what I'm just saying. Now, from this point onwards, we have the technical complete. Lastly, it's just doing color options. You can go ahead and make it individual technical for each color. But I found that actually um, just having a page and then detailing all the colors is more effective than making a different technical for each color. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to drop down all the colors that we need. One thing you guys can actually do if you're unconfident in your technical is go ahead and add in 
production references. These are amazing. Production reference pants and sleeve design production reference pants and sleeve design production reference front false design There we go. And don't forget to rasterize your images in Illustrator or else they will come out um, blurry because they're not synced to your computer. Anyway, guys, that's how you make your technical start to finish for a garment production. These are ready to send off. All you have to do now is export the individual designs to their design files without any effects on the actual designs themselves. So um, they can die cut them properly without having to remove things themselves and maybe leading to an error. But yeah, that's how you guys make a technical start to finish. Hope you guys enjoy that. Don't forget to check out Design by Will if you guys wanted to see the full design process on how we make this design start to finish on the Studio Will Patreon. But other than that, I'll see you guys later. Peace, let's roll.